Good morning all around. Today we have a sunny day and yes, today the Nations League has us back again. But I don't know how you guys feel about it. Uh, I was very excited for the initial Nations League weekend. I'm a little bit less excited and uh, I think it also has to do that uh, when it starts today there is not this immediate absolute 100% must watch match for a neutral uh, for the countries involved of, of course uh, I would say it's always must watch but you know today the big group A game the only group A game uh, is Poland against Portugal Portugal without Ronaldo uh, Poland played well against Italy, I have to say, so um, they are for sure a team that is interesting to see. Uh, and I think that it's an intriguing matchup, uh, a rematch of the quarterfinal uh, 2016 European Championships. But it doesn't have to pull, like, say, France against Germany or something like that, which we'll get uh, in this. of games so yeah uh, to me almost the bigger matchup is the one that we have uh, in group B between Russia and Sweden uh, don't know why I guess you can point this back again at when I started watching soccer 94 World Cup the Russia and Sweden were there Portugal and Poland were not um, I'm sure if I were if I grew up a little bit I was 10 years older, uh, for me Poland would be a big soccer nation. When I grew up, Poland was nowhere. And all it became recently, I think the first time I really take, took note of Poland was when they were the 2002 World Cup. Um, so yeah, uh, it's good. I can again appreciate the history that Poland had, especially in the 70s. And if I ever do uh, a video on my series that I had with the greatest goal scorer um, in World Cup history, you will see that Lato Paul features very, very high on that list. Uh, if you have never heard of him, look it up. He was the top scorer in the 1974 World Cup, and uh, his goal scoring record is unparalleled. And yeah, uh, Portugal is without Ronaldo, uh, probably due to the allegations against him. I cannot say much about that. I think the only things I say first, 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 first of all, um, you always have to assume the indicted to be innocent, that it, yeah, the accused to be innocent, but also um, it's a very serious issue that should be taken super serious. Uh, that's all I can say. I don't, I know too little about it. Of course, he's denying it. Well, uh, who is it? Uh, yeah, so Russia Sweden to me is almost a more intriguing matchup, although I don't think uh, it has the better players. But there is something about that matchup that makes it for me personally a little bit more interesting. Uh, I think there's also an interesting matchup tonight between Montenegro and Serbia, uh, especially since they at the 2000s World Cup they were still together, 2006 World Cup they were still together. So yeah, there is probably some interest there, and then of course Romania against Lithuania, the <laughs> yellow duel. I'm actually uh, looking forward to that one because um, when I shot my uh, Champions League, uh, Nations League jersey reviews videos for League C, the first one you saw yesterday from uh, Group C1, uh, I didn't have good pictures of either the Montenegro or the Lithuania away kids. Uh, I hope that we'll get to see them now. Uh, so I can either I tag them on or I make a separate um, or uh, I you know I make a separate video now or I tag them on at a later point. Uh, remains to be seen. So yeah, uh, this is how it starts off. But then I, I actually things get better. We get, for instance, uh, tomorrow uh, we get a rematch of the World Cup semi-final between uh, in Croatia and England. That I think is an intriguing matchup. I'm actually looking forward to that one. And we also get um, 
Belgium and Switzerland, which also is not now the big a glamour matchup, but if you think about it, uh, for me this is right there where Poland against Port Portugal is. Interesting matchup, not one that I would probably watch, uh, but I think cool enough. The one thing is of course that at the same time Austria is playing against Northern Ireland and I'm not sure if I'm really in a pity. Um, I probably go for Croatia in England. I have to think about it. I mean, I would like to watch Austria too, but uh, if uh, if I'm honest, I think that's the more interesting one uh, to me. And then, um, and it's also again kind of a little bit uh, weird uh, to say it. The big matchup uh, on Saturday is, of course, the Netherlands against um, Germany, and it's not that big of a matchup anymore. When I grew up, this was the matchup in Europe. I mean, uh, talk about grudge match. This was the absolutely the matchup uh, between two nations that at that moment uh, didn't even like each other that much, uh, at least on the pitch, uh, in official circles, of course, they liked each other. But yeah, this was a real uh, big matchup, and now it's kind of, uh, it has all the glamour is lost on that one um, due to the Netherlands kind of falling off in the past. Two years, four years, four years. So yeah, uh, we know how that one is going. Um, there's also, and that I'm happy that this is on in the afternoon. Um, I'll talk about, uh, we already saw the pick that I have with Austria and Croatia, England. Um, but the big thing is that uh, Slovakia against Czech Republic matchup. That one, I think, is really, uh, Legislatively, couldn't have done it better. I really have to say that uh, to pair those two. Um, Ukraine in there, I think Ukraine is, shares a border with Slovakia, so you have a nice connection there. But yeah, that I think will be interesting to see. Uh, there is not that much hit. It's not Croatia against Serbia, which at the moment I, I would say in Europe is the biggest Croatia match uh, outside of uh, forbidden games like Azerbaijan against Armenia, uh, Victus, Georgia, or something like that. But uh, Albania, Serbia, that was a huge one. Uh, <laughs> I still cannot believe that UEFA allowed this to happen with all the tension that is there, uh, but yeah, that's how it goes. Uh, so yeah, those are kind of the, uh, in the first day, and, and I, let's go back to this, uh, picky. what I don't like about the Nations League is that the kickoff times are not staggered enough. Um, they go for the 8.45 slot, uh, but honestly, if they would do it like with the Champions League, have a few games at 7, have a few games at 9, uh, yes, it gets late. Uh, or maybe let even the federations pick themselves the kick of time. Uh, make it convenient for the people that are actually interested. I really don't get, for instance, if you go uh, further east, uh, what's in Central Europe, 8.45 kick of time in uh, in the east is a 10 o'clock kick of time, uh, quarter to 10. It's ridiculous. Uh, or if you go to Russia, Ukraine, even uh, later. To me, this is this is a clear disregard of the people living there. Uh, and I don't know why they don't fix it. Uh, I know why. Because you make more money this way. But I, uh, when I saw Again, for the League C video, I looked for uh, some footage uh, to have the nice Bulgaria kit. Uh, the stands are empty. It's not only that uh, people are tired of soccer, but most of the time you don't even get to watch it properly because it, the games are way too late or not at a convenient time. Uh, because the times are all geared to Central Europe or even uh, all Western Europe. I mean, England is a big market. For them, a uh, quarter uh, 7.45 kick of time oh, it sounds really good. Uh, I also would like to have a 7.45 kick of time, honestly. Uh, I think this would make so much more sense to me than uh, the 8.45 or later. Uh, I can sort of live with 8.45, I think 8.30 would, would be for me the... I know it's just 15 minutes, but 8.30 for me makes a whole, a whole lot of difference. Gotta say it that way. 
But yeah, so uh, the big matchup is then uh, uh, Netherlands against Germany, but I know where this is going. But then things turn around and we get uh, the matchups from match day one again. And now it will go in the same direction. So we will um, get Poland playing in Italy. And Poland, by the luck of the draw, gets a double home match day, which I think with a little bit more smarter scheduling could have been probably avoided much. Not 100% sure, but I think it could have been avoided, but that's how it played out. Um, for Poland it's great because I think if they get uh, the six points, they look really pretty in that group. Uh, there's not much that the others can do. And uh, The interesting thing is also that uh, for the final four, the three nations that have applied for it are Italy, Poland and Portugal. And I guess it goes to the group winner. So Poland is playing for the hosting rights. I would be right to. I think I've, I've, I, I would like to see this played in Poland, honestly. Yeah, uh, what were the other matchups in match there? There was, of course, England against Spain. So we have Spain in England. And England has uh, two matchups. Also has a double match day, but double away match day. Also not ideal, if we're honest. So uh, that could be tough. Then uh, we have what was it? Iceland against Switzerland. So Switzerland has the double match day. What was it? That I'm not sure now. But I think it was Iceland uh, and Switzerland. Um, and if I'm correct, so yeah. This is all right, but then of course uh, France at home to Germany to end uh, the six days of Nations League play. Uh, that one, of course, is for the final four as well. I think uh, the Netherlands will not have much say in that. If France can get the win out of that one, then um, they will make it to the final four. I don't see. I don't see it any other way uh, happening. And I guess ahead of the World Cup, I would have said this is open, maybe even a uh, slight uh, advantage Germany. France didn't um, convince me in the first two games in the Nations League, but they are at the moment probably the better squad. The only question is fatigue. So maybe Germany can get something. It it will surely be interesting to watch. That I have to say. Uh, and then you know all the other matchups that we had in leagues B and C on the first day, uh, which means that Northern Ireland has a double match day in the group with Austria. Um, I think the Czechs have a double match day. They have to then go to the Ukraine, so double match day away. Uh, Russia, Sweden. They will play. Uh, they play with Turkey. Uh, and I wanna say that it was Russia against Turkey first, so we'll have Russia will have a double match day at home, I think. I'm doing this all from memory and probably everything's wrong what I'm saying. Uh, I'm not sure if I, uh, how quickly I will be able to check this. But yeah, um, I think there's a slow build to this uh, to this one now, and it really seems to me that it's the uh, France Germany. Uh, Netherlands group and the England, Croatia, Spain group that's uh, really dragged this a little bit out of the uh, from being absolutely boring. And then, of course, you get some uh, nice matchups in the lower leagues, as I said, uh, Sweden, Russia, or uh, Slovakia against Czech Republic, where there is just a little bit more, um, there is some rivalry there that makes it an interesting watch. But yeah. Um, other news the, uh, that we can look at is, of course, the scandal in Belgium. I uh, don't know what will happen there. Uh, it was just funny when they said that the um, burger coach was taken into custody. Uh, I told this my colleague, who is half Croatian, yesterday, and he said, is he, uh, that he, there's potential match fixing, and he, is he Croatian? Yeah, he is Croatian. Victory just had such a laugh on that. Uh, I don't think it's his nationality to has anything to do with the indictment. I think there's much more happening there. 
um, police raided the offices of the big four clubs in Belgium at the moment, which is Anderlecht, uh, Brugge, uh, Standard, and Henk. It will be. I am curious what will happen there. Of course, we saw some firings in the in the leagues all around, which are also. Yeah, this is probably the time to do. Mourinho maybe will hang on by the thread, I guess. Uh, yeah, I thought um, the situation in Italy was very interesting that um, Kievo Fadia, a coach that uh, saved him from relegation last season, and got a Giampiero Ventura, which of course is a little bit in disgrace because of the whole. Italy failing to qualify for the World Cup thing that happened uh, almost a year ago. So yeah, that's gonna be interesting uh, how that's gonna work out. Ventura has been doing fine work at Torino and so on, but no, never on the highest level. So he might actually be a uh, decent hire. Also shows how his stock has fallen that he's now uh, working for a relegation team. And the other one, of course, Genoa fired the coach for the third time, uh, this particular coach for the third time, and again went to the predecessor. And I'm wondering what the, what are they thinking? Uh, I don't know how long the coach has been in place, but you know, uh, going for the predecessor again, it, it seems like they're flip flopping the two coaches. Doesn't make much sense. And the other really idiotic news out of Austria. Uh, is that our star player, Arnautovic Alaba, the other star player is injured, um, was called after Austria lost to Bosnia uh, a month ago. Um, he went out to eat with Edin Dzeko from, of course, Bosnia and Herzegovina, two team captains, and Dzeko uh, posted a picture of the two of them eating on Instagram, and for some reason this became a big issue. Because, yeah, he went out on drinking. No, this was a dinner. Uh, and the two of them are friends. Why shouldn't friends go out? I, Yes, maybe it's not smart to post this on Instagram, but I don't understand uh, the uproar within Austria. I really don't get it. I'm fine, he was released by the coach. He can go wherever he wants. And yes, maybe it's not to have, but you know, have a dinner with with, with a friend, especially when he said that this guy, uh, Jaco actually was helping him when he went to Stoke. He was living near Manchester, Jaco was living there. He was hell, 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 helping one of their friends. Then take into account that um, Jaco is of Bosnian origin. Uh, Arnautovic has Serbian parents. Uh, the two nations don't like each other. He was booed consistently, but they went out together. You know, off the field, we are friends. We are not. Uh, we are not supporting all this mess around uh, the nationalities, especially in the Balkans, so especially former Yugoslavia, where people don't get along. Uh, well, mostly because of politics. It's just such a non-issue. But there was a huge uproar, and now to top it all off, the parts of the presidency in the, of the Austrian Soccer Federation and that's a whole other issue. We have one main president and then uh, every province can send their own one and uh, there's so much stupid politics and amateur politics involved uh, that it prevents Austria from actually getting something more uh, professional, honestly. But yeah, uh, those guys are so upset about this that they want to strip Arnautovic of the co-captaincy. Uh, if that sounds familiar, yeah, uh, Mourinho is stripped Pogba of the co-captaincy. Oh, I'm going to stay in this lane. It is not binding and ultimately the coach makes a decision. I just hope the coach says, you idiots. I really don't get it. I really, really, really don't get it. Uh, I think uh, you have to trust an adult to make the right decisions and the optics may not have looked uh, super pretty, especially since the um, picture went up a little late, but honestly, the guys went out for dinner, 
are crying out loud. It just gets me so upset. Uh, this short size sidedness and uh, to the standard that we want to hold the players. The other thing is that um, Austria against Northern Northern Ireland. Um, now the big talk here is that the mentality of the players is not right. Blah 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 blah. I doubt that the mentality is right because uh, it's all yeah. If we have the right mentality, we will beat Northern Ireland because we are the better team. Football is a game of chance, almost. 50% of it is down to chance. If you watch any games, watch the Real Madrid against uh, CSK Moscow game. Uh, they got a goal in the second minute, the Real hits the woodwork and so on. It's, there's so much random error in a low score, scoring game uh, in there. Uh, same goes for Austria in Bosnia. Austria had that game in the bag, more or less. Uh, they might not have won it, but they, it seemed like a perfect nil-nil draw and just a random a sequence of errors in defense where just for a split second you're not there and uh, the goal is scored. I'm getting off on a rant. <laughs> and I see it everywhere. It's always the mentality, the mentality, the mentality. If you're the better team and you have good teamwork together, if there's a functioning team, you're usually better. You don't need a mentality issue and uh, if playing for a country is not enough and I honestly this is the one place where I am uh, I like that there's this uh, friendly rivalry between nations although some 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 sometimes no no all is friendly there you can show off your nationality but if I think about my personal nationality you see me I'm wearing today a Greece shirt I'm wearing all kinds of national teams um, I'm Austrian, yes, I stand by that, but I think I'm more uh, European than anything else. Uh, I really don't get this uh, nationalistic rising everywhere, especially within Europe. I can see if there's a change in culture uh, that we might, this is something, yeah, you can preserve uh, the right core values and blah, blah, blah. But ah. in the end, we're all humans, believe it or not. Uh, well, I got off on a tangent here. Uh, when I was teaching, I tended to do this a lot. So, <laughs> the first time that I really did this in a video, but it just irks me so much that uh, such non issues are being blown up by uh, certain media outlets and questioning, especially the Arnautovic thing, qu 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 questioning the attitude of the player. There is nothing there, absolutely nothing there. You make a story out of nothing. And Arnautovic even said yesterday in the press conference that uh, it angers him a lot that this is uh, that this is a little bit blown up. Well, still have a bit to go, but you know, uh, I think I'm gonna end it here. I'm gonna do reviews of the games. Of course, uh, tomorrow you will have the jersey reviews. And yeah, uh, we probably will look at a few jerseys, like this one, uh, starting Sunday, something like that. Let me know what you think about the games that are coming up. Uh, if you can relate to the issues that I brought up now, uh, let me know your thoughts as well. Maybe there's an angle I'm missing. I don't think so, but maybe there is. And yeah, uh, give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye.